Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here and welcome to another episode of the Darkroom Knight. Today I am pitting three developers against each other with a roll of Kodak Double X. You more seasoned photographers will say, well, D96 is made for it. And yeah, sure, we absolutely will be looking at comparisons of identical scenes developed in each soup. But there are other factors to take into account, like your wallet and workflow. Ultimately, today we will discover which is the best developer for Kodak Double X. Before we get started, please take a moment to sign up to my monthly newsletter. The link is in the description. I'm having a draw on May 1st for one of my 2020 darkroom box sets, which contains seven of my favorite photos taken from last year. Okay, first thing that we need to take into account, I think, is your wallet. If it's too expensive for you, then the other points are pretty pointless. Now, of course, prices are not concrete and you'll be able to find better deals the more you shop around. So these numbers are not absolute, but they should give us a ballpark of the cost per roll. For Kodak D76 and D96, I will be using the price available at the Film Experience Camera Store in Longview, Alberta. And for Rodnall, I'll be using Blazonall, available here in Calgary at the Camera Store. To make a gallon or 3.8 liters of Kodak D76, it's going to set you back about 13 Canadian dollars. To make a liter of D96, that will be about 10 dollars. And Rodnall works a little bit differently. It's a one shot, but 500 milliliters is 2487. Now, how many rolls of 35 millimeter film can you develop with each of these? Each of them have different ratios of stock to working solution. And we'll take a look at the most common dilutions. Kodak D76 after mixing can be poured straight or mixed one to one with water. There are more dilute measurements you can make for sure, um, but that will add to your developing time and change how your image will turn out. For today's example, we'll just talk about stock solution or one-to-one -one dilution. Assuming you develop one 35 millimeter roll at a time, that is either 12 rolls of film or with one-to-one, -one, it's 25 rolls. If you really wanna stretch it and decide to only develop 35 millimeter rolls in pairs at one-to-one, -one, you can develop 30 rolls of film. This means it will cost you between 43 cents and a dollar eight per roll of 35 millimeter film to develop. The disadvantage here is that once you initially mix the powder, it has about a three month shelf life. So to get the most out of a batch, you need to develop 10 rolls of film per month. Next up is Rodinol. The most common dilutions are one plus 25 and one plus 50. This is a high concentrate developer that is in liquid form when you buy it. To develop a 35 millimeter roll uh, one at a time, you're gonna need 11 and a half milliliters for a one plus 25 solution or 5.9 milliliters for one plus 50. That's 43 or 84 rolls respectively. Developing in pairs will give you 52 and 102 rolls for one plus 25 and one plus 50 dilutions in a 500 milliliter Patterson tank. How that translates into cost per roll is 24 cents to 58 cents a roll. The advantage here is that it has a longer shelf life and it doesn't need to be prepared until you're ready to develop and can be mixed a little at a time. While I have found Rodinol tends to crystallize around the mouth of the bottle, I haven't seen any adverse effects from that. Last one on the list here is D96. The D96 kit I have is one liter for $10. It's a powder like D76, so once you've mixed it up, it has a shelf life, which I assume is similar to the other powder developers at about three months. The difference here is that it's a motion picture developer made for films like Double X, which is a motion picture film. D96 is the most expensive on the list at three rolls of 35 millimeter per pack or four if you double up in a 500 milliliter tank. While there is no official developing time for using D96 in a one plus one solution, it is possible to get good results and that will stretch your number of rolls to six in a 300 milliliter tank or eight if you double up in a 500 milliliter tank. This makes the cost per roll $1.25 to $3.33 per roll. Now let's talk a bit about developing times. Kodak D76 and D96 both have a developing time of seven minutes, 
but D96s recommended at 21 Celsius instead of the normal 20 Celsius you see with most films. Finally, Rodinal OnePlus 25 has the quickest time of 5 minutes 45 seconds at 20 Celsius. So at the end of this video, if you decide that the differences are not significant in image quality, the takeaway here is Rodinal is by far the cheapest and fastest means to a developed image for XX and other films. Now on to the comparisons. To create this comparison, I took an image of my city skyline. I shot the entire roll as fast as possible to minimize any changes in lighting. I took a series of exposures metered properly, doing a spot meter off the buildings. Then I shot three stops underexposed and three stops overexposed to see if any of the developers handle them differently as well. I shot this on my Nikon FE, which has a reliable shutter, and used a tripod for stability and consistency in composition. To scan the negatives, I used my Epson V800. The scans you see are straight scans with no edits applied, but the software is still going to make a guess at levels, so I've also provided the histograms, which we'll go over. First comparison here are the three images side by side. You may notice that the Rodinal sample is super noisy compared to the others. Um, this is normal and you'll find similar results in other high concentrate developers like Kodak HC110. The other thing you may notice is that there is grain clumping, another characteristic of high concentrate developers. Now if you don't mind that, or even prefer it, that's okay. If not, then the real contest is between D76 and D96. There is much smoother grain and an overall flatter image with the other two. The major difference here is that Kodak D76 has more recovery in the highlights and slightly darker midtones, but you really have to look at the buildings to see it. To get a better idea of the differences, we need to look at the histograms. You can see it's still pretty close until we color code them and overlap. Blue is D76 and red is D96. I think the takeaway here is that the D96 provides greater range of tonality. Here are my final edited versions of both D76 and D96. The difference isn't really all that much to be honest. A slightly flatter image in the highlights from the D76, as well as what appears to be greater shadow detail in the D96. Moving on to the underexposed images, you can see fairly clearly the shadow detail drops off in Rodinal pretty fast. Kodak D76 and D96 are close, but neither is significantly better than the other. On the histogram, you'll see better shadows in the D96 and better highlights in the Rodinal. Turning our attention to the overexposed images, we see all three handled overexposure pretty well, and in fact, I would say the greatest highlight recovery was in the Rodinal. If you can get past the chunky grain, Rodinal wins this round. I actually thought that I would be going into this experiment with cut and dry answers. And that's the mistake that I make each time I do one of these assumptions. The biggest surprise, first of all, is that it seems as though Rodinal handles overexposure better. Now, while D96 is designed for double X, it's very hard to ignore how little of a difference there is between it and D76, fundamentally. While you could argue there is a big difference, I would say that editing and contrast filters can make up for some of that. The advantage that D96 seems to have is in the shadows, and that's something that can't really be fixed once the detail is lost, whereas highlights can be more easily recovered. What you need to decide for yourself is if the differences are worth the extra cost. In this case, it's almost three times more for D96 than Kodak D76. Kodak D76 is the developer by which all others are judged, and it happens to be my favorite with Xtal being a close second. I like the results of D96 and I also like the results of XX. One of my favorite photos of 2020 was shot on XX and I'll use both again. For me, I think D96 would come into play if A, I came home from a shoot suspecting my images may be slightly underexposed, B, if I knew I took a real winner and wanted to ensure a negative with the greatest range, or C, if I shot low key studio work or night photography. Developers are tools, and it's about the right tool for the right job. Some people, they want punchy, harsh blacks and lots of grain, and that's okay. Develop with Rodinal, HC110, or another high concentrate. Others want more control in the darkroom, in which case I suggest Kodak D76, or spring for the D96 and see if you like it. If you want to take a look at the high resolution images for yourself, be sure and check out the link in the description, which also includes a transcript for this episode.
That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Darkroom Night. If you did, please consider becoming my patron on Patreon. Starting at just $1, you get things like early access, free prints, and your name in the credits. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, stay classic. <laughs>